Every magic item location in Baldur's Gate 3, Act 1. This one's well known, but the first item that you can get is from Commander Zalk in the beginning tutorial. The best strategy to get this weapon is to have Shadowheart equip this spell command before the fight and then use it on Zod to have him drop the blade. Then you can just take it a run or use it to beat him. This item is completely missable, so if you miss it at the start of the game, you're not ever getting it. There are two magic items that you can get at the very beginning of the game at the chapel. After finding the secret sarcophagus where you get the withers, there is a chest that contains the amulet of lost voices. Continuing further, you will find a sarcophagus that is heavily trapped. Inside it, you will find the Watcher's Guide. This one is hard to miss. You get it at the beginning of the game after saving the grow from a few goblins. The gloves of power you can loot off of this goblin and immediately wear on your rogue or a martial fighter. And you can immediately put those gloves to use to get the next magic item, the Hell Rider's Pride. If Zevlar the Tiefling gets knocked out during the altercation that follows, you can pickpocket him for the Hell Rider's Pride before you talk to him to make it really easy to get them. You'll find the first trader, Aaron, at the beginning of the Emerald Grove. On top of an assortment of plus one gear and at later levels plus two gear, you find a few unique magic items. He carries the gloves of missile snaring, the ring of fleeing, the hedge wanderer armor, the rain dancer, spell thief, and dragon's grasp. The Corellan's Grace is one of the best early monk items, and it is sold by Auntie Ethel, who is a fairly easy to miss vendor, but she will be here at the very start of the game as you enter the Emerald Grove. In the Emerald Grove, Daman is one of the most important traders in Baldur's Gate 3. In Act 1, he carries two unique items, and both of them are very useful. The Safeguard Shield gives you plus one to all saving throws, which is just Good, but the best item here, and arguably the best option that you should buy at the very beginning of the game, is the Hunting Short Belt. The Whispering Promise is a magic item that changes owners, but the original and easiest to find owner is Volo. Simply interrupt his rant in order to trade, and you'll be able to get the Whispering Promise extremely early and not have to track it down later. In the Emerald Grove, up by a cliff, there's a bard. Right beside the bard, there's a chest. Once opened, you will find the Cap of Curing. The Amulet of Sylvanas can be found right in the Druid's Grove near the coast. It is a convenient way to deal with Asterion's Bite, but other than that, it does not have too many uses. This is the first magic item that I always give to Gale. The Ring of Color Spray allows you to cast Color Spray once for free, and is really only good at low levels. This item can be found in the Harpy's Nest right behind the Emerald Grove. There is an imposter among the livestock in the Emerald Grove. If you vote him out in a single hit, you will find the Shapeshifter Boon Ring. This gives you the effect of a second guidance that is able to stack whenever you are using Disguise Self. Coincidentally, if you buy the deluxe version of the game, at camp you will find the Mask of the Shapeshifter. This lets you cast Shapeshift as many times as you want. It's literally pay to win. Stop. Don't do that. If you do that, you're gonna miss out on loot that you get in Act 2, so leave the cow alone. So apparently some loot you only get if you play a specific class. And so far, the only example of this that I'm aware of is the Pale Oak. Now the staff itself isn't very good, it allows you to cast a vine spell, and it allows you to be immune to your own vines. The only interesting thing about this weapon is that you can only get it if you save Kaga from herself as a druid. There is only one way to get the Broodmother's Revenge, by killing Kaga. Pickpocketing does not work, so if you don't want your playthrough to be ruined by Kaga's death, there are two options. First, you can investigate Kaga and do the Shadow Druid questline and then not convince her to see the error of her ways. Or, if you get rid of the goblins, Kaga will just be kind of by herself. If you save at least one of the Tiefling children, and then head over to the Tiefling hideout hidden in the Emerald Grove, there you will find Maul, who is not happy with the druids and wants you to steal their idol from them. Now doing this will be very dangerous as there's a strong chance that it will lead to the druids just murdering everybody. You can get around this by first initiating Maul's quest and then completing the Investigate Kaga quest. This will allow you to steal the idol without them murdering all of the Tieflings, 
but they still don't like it, so you still need to get away with the crime. However, it does give you the best ring in Act 1, which is the Ring of Protection. The ring will give you a plus one to your AC and plus one to all of your saving throws. Easy to miss, you're gonna need to climb the rocks right beside the Emerald Grove. Once you get to this area, right on a skeleton is a pendant, the silver pendant, which gives you the ability to cast Guidance. This item is very easy to miss, very useful, and you get it at the start of the game. Don't miss it. I actually missed both of these in my first playthrough. At the cave right by the Emerald Grove, once you defeat the enemies, you can pickpocket Fendal for the Key of the Ancients, and behind a trapped chest, is the nature snare which allows you to ensnare enemies this might be really good but i haven't tested it let me know what you guys think of this weapon next up are the goblins by the windmill in the blighted village the leader of these goblins carries the very heavy great axe the first plus one magic weapon that you get from an enemy and then inside are some really good boots for any rogue Whenever you dash or do something similar, the speedy light feet will give you three lightning charges, which will let you hit your attacks more often. This one's very hard to find. The Fleet Fingers are actually buried south of the Blighted Village. If you missed out on this and you really need this ability, just take two levels of Monk, and then you can just jump around as much as you want instead of just once. Right before the Blighted Village, you'll find Edwin and his two companions. Edwin is going to be carrying half of a magic weapon. The other half is embedded in the head of the owlbear in a nearby cave. Once you kill the owlbear, make sure to loot the Oak Father's embrace and then fuse the two halves together. This will give you a spear that does insane damage to enemies that have too many eyes, like spiders. You can reach the spider cave in the blighted village by either going through the well or through the building. There are three magic items inside. You'll find the spurred band on a skeleton right here. Up in this chest is the spider step boots, which will keep you from getting stuck in webs, which will matter because there's a spider boss right up ahead. On its body is the poisoner's robe, and near it is the dark amethyst. In the blighted village, down a hatch, you will find a potion shop. Look for a secret lever and find the secret area. Then get to the other secret area Area behind the talking mirror. Along with the main attraction, there are the Bracers of Defense in this chest here. Bracers of Defense are one of the best items in D&D. Everyone wants them and this is at the beginning of Act 1. Do not miss this. In the middle of the Blighted Village is a chest containing the Haste Helm. Near that are three ogres. One of them is wearing the headband of intellect and he's kind of a talker because of it. You can choose to manipulate these guys into working for you, but I do not recommend it. I personally did find a glitch where I was not able to get the reward after summoning him using the war horn. Just take these guys out and take the headband of intellect, which raises your intelligence. The smuggler's ring can be found right near Karlak on the rising road right here on this skeleton. Be careful with it because it's good for getting you into trouble, but not out of it. There's only one way to get the infernal rope. You have to go to the rising road and kill Karlak, one of your available companions. Now there used to be a glitch where you could actually get both Karlak and the Infernal Robes in one playthrough, but unfortunately they did patch it. Those of you who got the robes got to keep them, but those of you who are late to the party, well you miss out. On the Ryzen Road to Karlak, you'll find a Toll Collector's Key, grab that for later. Take the sword from the Paladin and then look for a hatch nearby. First you'll use the key and then after you use the key or break down the doors, you will be able to find a secret room. Inside the secret room is a large stash of gold and other things such as the plus one great axe and more importantly, the gloves of heroism. After the null encounter to the north of the Rising Road, you can get two magic items from bodies and that is going to be the speedy reply and the shattered flail. Up just north from that, as far up north as you can, you will find the Reason's Grass, which is a really good item for barbarians. Now there is a shipment that contains the Iron Flask inside, but if you get into this point, you're already missing out on magic items, and the Iron Flask is not as good as it seems. Make sure you're letting Rugen leave with his shipment intact in order to get all the magic items that you can from the Zentarum. At Walking's Rest, there's a time-sensitive event that involves saving an NPC. She gives you a choice between three magic weapons that all give you lightning charges whenever they deal damage. I recommend the Spell Sparkler because you can stack a lot more lightning charges with spells than you can with single attacks. Inside a chest in the building, you'll find Hammer Raft. It does have a nasty but glitchy combo where if you take two levels of Monk, you can use Step of the Wind to jump as many times as you want in one turn. So if you want to do that, you can do that with this weapon, but there's no other 
way to use it. Now, I don't actually recommend you get this weapon, but one of the fists carries the Startle Bee's Womb Seeker. This weapon does not deal extra damage, but it does give you an extra 1d4 bonus to your attack rolls. If you are running a Great Weapon Master build and you need to make sure that you hit all of your attacks, there are much better ways to do this than this weapon. Personally for me, even though I have footage of me getting this weapon, I do not have this weapon because I could not be bothered to actually do the fight that follows. I missed out on this magic item multiple times and I was looking specifically for magic items. At the null encounter, make sure you let the two guys actually deliver their own shipment. When the Zentarum actually receive this shipment, they will reward you with Herald, a magic crossbow which allows you to inflict Bane on a hit. Once you get on the Zentarum's good side, the trader will be accessible and you will be able to buy six magic items. The Giant Breaker, the Titan String Bow, the Gloves of Hail of Thorns, the Jolty Vest, the Gloves of Thievery, and the Rupturing Blade. If you miss out on this, some of them will be available in Merchants later on, but some of them will not. In the stash in the back of the Zentarum hideout, you will find the Best Beckoners. So despite this being a very rare item in Act 1, they're actually pretty terrible. Your familiar is going to have to make a wisdom saving throw or become mad, and this works outside of combat too, so it will happen if you summon the familiar. The only way this actually can be used is on a cleric, and that's for spiritual weapon. You could also put it on a wizard for flaming sphere, but flaming sphere is pretty terrible. But you can find infernal iron nearby, so at least that's worth it. You can actually get the strongest weapon in the game in Act 1. The Silver Sword of the Astral Plane is carried by Kithrak Voss, and you can use command to make him drop it before you begin combat. He will leave at the beginning of the encounter and leave you to fight the other Gith. But if your relationship with Lazelle is not good enough, she will side with the Gith Yankee instead of you and the fight will be unwinnable. As it is, it's possible at level 4, but extremely difficult so I recommend being level 5 if you do this. But the main reason I recommend you not do this is because afterwards it triggers dialogue with Lazelle, which contains spoilers for the story. So if this is your first playthrough, do not do this glitch. Instead, just loot the Gethinki and you'll get the weaker version of this weapon. Crusher can be found right near the portal at the Goblin Camp. You can interact with him and get his ring during the interaction, or you can make him angry and he'll walk off, in which case you can just take it from him. Go up the hill near the river by the Goblin Camp. Over here, you'll find a chest. This chest contains the Glowing Shield, a weapon that I use in pretty much every single playthrough. You can find Grab the Trader in the Goblin Camp outside. He sells the Swiry Shoes, the Doom Hammer, the Returning Pike, and the Gloves of Archery. And if you missed it before, he will also sell the Whispering Promise, which he stole from Volo. If you're friendly with the goblins, you'll find Roa Moonglow inside their camp. She's a trader who carries five really good magic items, but only in Act 1, so don't miss out on them. She carries the Blooded Great Axe, the Monster Slayer's Glaive, the Gold Wormling's Staff, the Hunter's Dagger, and the Bow of Awareness. If you miss out on these, you're probably not seeing them until Act 3, in which case they're just gonna be useless to you. I can almost guarantee you have not found this one. In the northeast of the Shattered Stanctum, on this specific skeleton, you will find the Ring of Poison Resistance. While it's not a magic item per se, I just had to include this. Before you start fighting the goblins, you can find Abderak within the Shattered Sanctum. He's going to want to hit you. A lot. And if you succeed all of your either performance or intimidation checks, you will get a permanent buff. Also, you can get the Loviatar Scourge if you trade with them during this interaction. There are three magic items you can find within the ward pins in the goblin camp. In a chest, you will find the Beastmaster's Chain. On one of the goblins, you will find the Linebreaker Boots. And on a pile of bones within the warg pen itself, you will find the warg fane, which is good against goblins. To use some of these magic items to their fullest extent, you'll need to get branded by Priestess Gut. She carries two such items on her person, the Absolute's Talisman and the Absolute's Warboard. In her personal quarters, you'll also find the Amulet of Misty Step, which has no such requirement. You can find the Water Sparklers in a chest right beside Menthara. And if you kill her, you can take her tadpole along with three magic items, but you don't have to kill her, even if you're doing a good playthrough. There used to be a glitch where you had to turn her into a sheep in order to get her into a good playthrough, but apparently it's just normal now. If you just knock her out, it's fine. In the back of the Shattered Sanctum is an undefended vault. Inside are three magic items, the Amulet of Saloon's Chosen, the Gloves of the Growling Underdog, and the Spring Step Boots. You can grab these before the boss fight without any issue. You can find the boss hobgoblin towards the back of the goblin camp. Make sure you do everything you want to before you begin this fight, and once you do beat him, he will drop the Faith Breaker. 
Once you save Volo and then meet him again at your camp, he will give you the Blazer of Benevolence. But if you decide to talk to him again, he will offer to try to extract the tadpole from your eye. It's a terrible idea, it doesn't work, and you lose your eye in the process. But he does give you a better eye which will allow you to see invisible enemies. This isn't the only time doing the dumb decision gives you the biggest reward, so feel free to be as dumb as you want. After you save the Druid's Grove or otherwise get the Rune of the Wolf, you will have access to the Druid's Vault. Inside are two magic items, Sorrow, the first polearm magic weapon you can find, and the Robe of Summer. If you head to the island south of the swamp, you'll find a few enemies along with two magic items. On one of the enemies, you'll find the Wood Woad Shield, and in a chest nearby, you'll find the Sparkle Hands, which is a must-have item for any monk. You can find Gandril right near the Riverside Tea House. He carries a pretty good crossbow, Gandril's Aspiration. But be careful about this one, his death, or lack thereof, will have consequences in the story later on. If you find and kill the Hag in Act 1, there are 5 magic items you can get and a permanent buff. Without giving spoilers, the Bitter Divorce is a magic wand that is associated with this quest, and you can find it in the loot room right beside the Everseeing Eye and the Staff of Crones. Additionally, if you kill or knock out the Hag, you will get the Tarnished Charm, and if you didn't buy it earlier, the Coralian's Grace. But if you bring her down to low HP, she will try to negotiate, offering you a magic hair that gives you one to any of your stats for the rest of the game. Once you reach the Underdark, you'll find yourself near or at the Salunite Outpost. Behind a locked gate, you'll find a locked chest which contains the Helmet of Smiting. Beside that chest, you'll find a secret door, and inside there you'll find a chest that is both trapped and locked, which contains the Luminous Armor. If you don't go out the window of the Salunite Outpost, you're going to miss out on three important magic items. Here you'll find the Spectator's Eyes, a magic necklace, the Blast Pendant, and in the backpack is the Frayed Drought Hood. It's not good at all, but it can be eaten by Gale, making it the worst item that can possibly be used by Gale. Additionally, here you can find the Icy Help, which is one third of a powerful magic item. This magic item is really good for optimizing which ones you're going to give up to Gale since you're going to be using three of them in Act 1, unless you speed the plot along. You can find the Amulet of the Unworthy from beating these two Minotaurs, and it's really close to the other terrible magic item that you should be giving the Gale. As you explore the Underdark, you're just bound to fight the Bulette, and if you beat it, you'll get the Blood Guzzler Garb. If you continue past where you fought the Spectator, if you cut down these webs, you'll get access to a chest which contains the Drow Studded Leather Armor. Outside near the Arcane Tower, in a chest, you can find the Skybreaker. And then once you go into the Wizard's Arcane Tower, you will find a chest called the Chest of the Mundane filled with basically nothing. But once you loot all of this, you'll find a magic item along with some other good loot. The magic item is called Mista's Grace, which is a pair of boots which will allow you to cast Featherfall. Most of the magic items in the Arcane Tower are hard to find and have some secret behind them. But the Uncovered Mysteries is not one of them, it's just in a chest on the second floor. You can power the Arcane Tower by grabbing a Sorcerer Flower down on the bottom floor and putting the Sorcerer Flower into the furnace. This will allow you to reach the top floors and on the fifth floor you will find a chest that contains the Mage's Friend. Also bonus points to anyone who knows what this button is for and the story behind it. There are two ways to get the Magic Ring the Guiding Light. I recommend being at least level 5 if you decide to go the hard way. If you do decide to go the hard way, you will also get the Light of Creation, which is a very high risk, high reward polearm. But if you don't want to fight, what you'll need to do is find two books. To get not murdered, you need to read The Road to Darkness, which is on the 5th floor. And to have Bernard give you the ring, you need to read the Threadbare book on the 3rd floor. Once Bernard does give you the ring, immediately equip it. You'll need it for the next item. Equip the Guiding Light and head to the secret room in the Arcane Tower using the Elevator. Here alongside fancy tables, you will also find the Staff of the Arcane Blessing. Immediately put that on Shadowheart because it is by far the best staff in Act 1. And loot a nearby chest to get the Sparks Wall, a magic ring that prevents you from being electrocuted and gives you resistance to lightning damage. This magic item is very easy to miss, but it's also not all that great. Right beside Bernard, you will find a stool of hill giant strength. If you sit in the stool, you'll be stronger, which is completely worthless. And if you break the stool, you will be able to use one of its legs as a magic item. 
but if you happen to have 18 strength already at the time, this item will already be outclassed by a simple plus one magic weapon. This magic item is very easy to miss. Go to the area right of the arcane tower and then jump over this ledge in order to get to this area right here. Also make sure to be careful about the explosive fruit here or you'll fall into the abyss. But one way or another, on this skeleton you'll find a helm of autonomy which will give you proficiency and wisdom saving throws. Starting at where you found the helm of autonomy, go down to the festering cove. There you will find some creatures doing a ritual. You can either kill or convince their leader in order to gain the sickle of Boal. Boal's blessing only works if there's Kuotoa able to worship, so if you kill everyone here, this magic item's kinda useless. What's not useless is the armor that's hidden up in a chest behind them. There you will find the slippery chain shirt. You can find this weapon right to the northwest of the Slunai outpost. Once you pull this weapon out of the stone, it comes with two unique abilities which you can use. Shriek pretty much makes any damage that you do do a tiny bit more damage, and Sing is basically like a second bless. If you're using this weapon alongside with the Staff of Arcane Blessing, you're gonna find it very difficult to miss your attacks. This trader you can find right near the entrance to the Mykonid colony. He carries the Lifebringer, the Circle of Blasting, the Baneful, the Sunwalker's Gift, the Boots of the Genial striding, the cinder shoes, the psychic spark, and mouse fur staff. Lots of great items here so don't miss out. In the Mykonid colony, you will find a gnome that has been poisoned by some nearby Druagar. If you offer her an antidote, she will give you the boots of speed, which is part of a quest line so hold on to that. You can have Blurg summon another trader, and surprisingly, he does not bite. Instead, he offers five magic items. The Creation's Echo, the Shade Spell Circlet, the Ring of Salving, which is really good, the Boots of Stormy Clamor, which is surprisingly just as good, if not better, and the Pearl of Power Amulet, which just gives you spells back. And if you let him brew a potion for you, it won't work, but you can mug him out of his Ring of Mind Shielding afterwards. When you reach the Mykonid colony, the leader will give you a mission. But feel free to ignore it completely and just bust down the door, they do not care. Here inside, you'll find the shadow of... the Hat of Invisibility, and the Icy Metal, the second of three parts of a magic item. In the northwest section of the map, you will find Bibberbang. But the Explorer's Ring is actually not in that mess, it's around it up on a ledge. And while you're at it, make sure you grab the Noble Stock, which can be used to give someone back their memories. The last trader in the Mykonid colony is an herbalist who gives you a quest in order to find her husband. Upon her husband's return, you will receive the gloves of Inhibited Kushido. She also sells four magic items, the Corrosive Flail, the Caustic Band which is very good, the Herbalist Gloves, and the Amulet of Restoration. In the Blighted Village, you will find a forge which has some blueprints nearby which ask you to find Sorcerer Bark. Sorcerer Bark can be found at the Sorcerer Tree in the Underdark. Bring that Sorcerer Bark to the forge in the Blighted Village and you will be able to craft either a greatsword, a sickle, or a dagger which will silence enemies on a hit. I was going to recommend the dagger because you can throw it at enemies and silence them that way, that way you don't have to actually have it equipped to use it, but when I went to collect footage and actually implement this, the dagger just vanished, so be careful I guess. You can find Philero the Forgotten near the Cersei Tree in the Underdark. He doesn't carry any magic items, but he does carry the Ice Crystal, which is the third of three parts of a magic item. If you've been paying attention, you already know where the other two parts are, but you can fuse the Icy Crystal, the Icy Helve, and the Icy Metal together to create the Morning Frost. You can find two magic items in the Underdark near the Dwegar. The Short Sword of First Blood can be found on an executed Deep Known, and you can get the Exterminator's Axe from Get Cold. Just make sure you use him to progress whatever quest you want to first. Once you're done exploring the Underdark, you can head to the Beats and then set sail. There you'll meet a Dwegar who you have a choice to either fight or trade with. On his boat in a chest is the Instringent Warhammer which can only be gotten by fighting with him. Otherwise, you can get a plus one great club by trading with him, and the rest of his stuff, the Bow of the Banshee, Jorgel's Greysword, and the Shining Staver of Skulls, you can all get by looting him. As soon as you find the area near the Grimforge, you'll find two Dwegar who are throwing deep gnomes into the water. If you notice to check them for loot first, you'll find that they have a ring that can let you turn invisible. In the northwest part of the Grimforge, you'll find a ledge which has a chest on it. Inside, you will find the real Sparky Sparks wall, which is really good for any lightning builds. Additionally, once you keep heading to the north, you will find right by a skeleton one of the Devil Foil masks. 
in the west section of the Grim Forge, there is a fake dead end. If you climb down the ledge, you will find three treasure chests to loot. Along with the secret chest, one of these three chests contains the wondrous gloves. Once you reach the upper area of the Grim Forge, you will find what I call the Bridge of Death. If you get past all the traps and reach the other side of this gate, you will find not only a lever to turn off all the traps, but also a chest containing the Protect the Sparks Fall, which is one of the very first shirts that you can find that will increase your wizard spell save DC. Upstairs in the western part of the Grimforge, you will find not only a shield mold on a skeleton, but inside you'll find a few enemies, and here you can find the Fire Stoker, along with a few Devil Foil masks. You can find the final magic item in the upper part of the Grim Forge to the southeast. Along with the Scimitar Mold, you can find the Dark Justicier Helm on this skeleton here. To get this next magic item, you'll need the boots of speed that you get from this gnome. You can find Sergeant Thryn in the Grim Forge who just has no shoes. As funny as it is to just leave her barefoot, you can give her the boots of speed back and she will give you one of two magic items. The armor of uninhibited Kushigo is good for monks, and the bracing band is really good for shoving builds. Sooner or later in the Grim Forge, you're going to want to save Nier and commence the ensuing bloodbath. I recommend siding with the Dwegar first for an easier fight and then betraying them later for all of the loot. After everything is said and done, Nier drops 1000 gold, the Sword of Screams, and the Disintegrating Nightwalkers. Meanwhile, Sergeant Thryn will drop the Ring of Absolute Force and you can get your Boots of Speed back from her. Once you kill the Dwegar, you can get the Cap of Wrath and the Deep Delver. Once you reach the Grim Forge, you can take a quick detour and you'll find a lava infested area with a magma elemental patrolling. Here you'll find a chest that contains the sentient amulet. It's got a hard lock, so you might need to bring it to camp for a starion to pick it, and looting it will start a quest line that will last until Act 3. There are two mithril ores that you can use to make adamantine items. Make sure you bring the two molds that you want to use and then head over to the adamantine forge. Before you're able to get the first item, you're going to have to fight a golem and beating him will give you the Grim Skull Helm. The armors will reduce damage alongside with stopping crits from happening and the weapons will ignore damage resistances that occur. These weapons are one of the few that ignore magical resistance and there are plenty of enemies that do have that. Once you're done with all the time sensitive events in Act 1, you can pass through the mountain pass and get to the final area in Act 1. Here you will find Lady Esther, a trader who specializes in gear for monks. She carries the Graceful Cloth, the Gloves of Cinder and Sizzle, the best item in Act 1, the Periapt of Wound Closure, a unique plus one pickaxe, the Boots of Elemental Momentum, the Gloves of Baneful Striking, and the Winter's Clutches, which is really good on a monk if you also have Morning Frost. There are four magic ceremonial weapons that you can find at the Rosymorn Monastery. The Warhammer is on the roof in the Giant Eagle's Nest. The Mace is carried by one of the Kobolds on the bottom floor. The Battle Axe is guarded by a Guardian of Fate spell on the top floor. And on the same floor nearby, you can find a ceremonial longsword. As for how to actually perform the ceremony, I'll let you figure it out. But the rewards are worth it. So this one actually requires you to backtrack a bit. Once you've defeated Nier in the Grimforge, head on back to the Mike and the Colony and bring them his head. The Envoy's Amulet allows you to add plus two to a persuasion roll once per long rest. For best value, put this on one of your allies and just forget about it and it'll come up when it comes up. The only other magic item outside in the Rosymorn Monastery is the Holy Lance Helm. You find it in a chest in the east side of the map. In the Githyanki Trash, you can find a traitor who is surrounded by only a few guards. You can use Fain Death to pickpocket her items. She carries the Gloves of Dexterity, the Knife of the Undermountain King, the Daredevil Gloves, the Vital Conduit Boots, the Defender Flail, Lorinthian's Wrath, one of the best weapons in Act 1, the Unseen Menace, and the Witchbreaker is the last magic item that she sells. However, killing her will give you the Amulet of Branding, which is one of the strongest amulets, especially for a character like Lazelle. Other than the Traitor, there are two Githyanki near the true entrances that carry magic items. Near the back entrance, one of the guards carries the Crossbow of Arcane Force, and the leaders of the guards at the front entrance carries the Ring of Arcane Synergy. Compared to the other Githyanki that are around, the front guards are actually one of the tougher fights, so be wary of that. Strangely enough, once you defeat the boss at the Githyanki Kresh, there are actually a lot of hidden magic items in the area. From the Bloodbath, you get the Diadem of Arcane Synergy, the Circlet of Psionic Revenge, and the two elegant chests in the area, you'll get the Strange Conduit Ring and the Gloves of Belligerent Skies. 
Just laying around you'll find the Skin Burster, which does exactly the opposite of what the name implies. Defensively, it's the best weapon you'll find. And in two easy to miss so-called display cases, you'll find the Hoarfrost Boots, and in the other wing the Necklace of Elemental Augmentation. And finally, there is but one magic item in Act 1. But don't head there too quickly, otherwise Lazelle's going to get mad at you. Make sure you do the main quest stuff, and then head through the secret door. And because I know you've been following along, you've probably already completed the ceremonial weapon puzzle, and now you can simply put in the token and retrieve the blood of Lathander. This mace is the only legendary weapon in Act 1, and it is one of the best weapons for Act 2. Oh, and collect the Soulbreaker Greysword on your way out of the-